Hello, my dear friends in Jesus. This is John R. Stevenson. And we just want to welcome you to the VNC Baptist Church, God's House of Deliverance worship service today. Mm -hmm. We count it an honor and a privilege that you have chosen to be a part of our worship service today. So, so God bless you. And, and come on, let's get ready for a wonderful time in the Lord. The right reverend will be preaching again today. Uh, hold on to your seats. We know that God is getting ready to say something powerful to us. That's mm -hmm. going to be life changing forever. Yes. And so let, let's let's pray for her, and then after I do that, then I'll give us our last inspirational song, and then uh, leave after that, we'll go farther into our worship service. Come on, come, go with us, and come, Girl. go with us. Mm -hmm. Come on, get yourself together, and let's get ready to serve uh, and worship God today. Father, we thank you so so very much. As we have prepared, and as, as you have prepared a table for us, uh, we're going to sit down at the table, and we're going to. Uh, we're going to glean and indulge from what it is that you prepared for us on this wonderful, wonderful Sunday. We thank you so very, very much for Reverend Stevenson, this prophetess of God. We thank you for the anointing that's up on her life. Yes, to preach and teach this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. God, I ask that you would strengthen her right now, encourage her right now. Whatever it is that she may be needing right now, God, you promise to be a supplier of all our needs. Go ahead on, Father. And and give her that now in the name of Jesus. So as she stands before your people and present the word of God to us today, <clears throat> we will receive straight from heaven today because you promised when we stand before you, you put your word now in your mouth, in our mouths. And so and once we hear that word, we'll know that you're speaking to us today. Speak to us like only you can. Give us insight and revelation like only you can. And we'll be mindful to give you all the glory and all the praise for it. I pray for each and every person that has decided to be a participant of the worship service today. Come on, God. Fill them with your spirit right now. Make every crooked place straight and every rough place smooth in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a little talk with Jesus. It's over now. Say, it's over now. It's over now. Said I had a little talk with Jesus. It's over now. <clears throat> Say it's over now. It's over now. Never to return again because it's over now. Lord, it's over now. Said it's over now. Everything is so much better because it's over now. Say it's over now. Lord, it's over now. We're so much better together because it's over now. Lord, it's over now. You said it's over now. I had a little talk with Jesus, it's over now. Hey, say it's over now. It's over now. Never to return again, it's over now. Say it's over now. It's over now. It's so much better now, it's over now. Say it's over now, it's over now. We're so much better together, it's over now. Lord, it's over now, it's over now. Said I had a little talk with Jesus, it's over now. Say it's over now. It's over now. That place you were stuck in, friend, that place where you've been toiling and dealing with, that place, that place where you felt like you were stuck in, it's over now. Say it's over now. Never to return again, cause it's over now. Say it's over now. It's over now. It's so much better, so much better now. 
It's over now. It's over now. We're so much better together. It's over now. Lord, it's over now. It's over now. Said I had a little talk with Jesus. It's over now. Said it's over now. It's over now. Said I had a little talk with Jesus. It's over now. Finally over now. It's over now. Said I had a little talk with Jesus. It's over now. It's over now. It's over now. Never to return again. It's over now. Say it's over now. It's over now. It's over now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the word of the Lord, that Speak they Lord. may see with yes, their spiritual yes, eyes Speak to us. and hear with their spiritual ears. Yes, Lord. But more so, God, we want to get to the heart of the matter. Hallelujah. So, Father, we say right now, be glorified, yes, Lord. be magnified mm -hmm. in this place today. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be mindful to give you all the praise all and honor and glory in advance. I'm doing all right all now. All and it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Only those who agree said amen. 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 Soldiers of Soldiers in the army of the Lord, present arms. This, this is, is my, my weapon. weapon. I, I am all been dangerous. dangerous. Look, Look out, devil, devil, the fight is, is on. Amen. I really had a, a, a one of them <laughs> moments there, right? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was, thought I had resorted back to the army for just a minute. So wait a minute, what's she finna say? Okay, will you join me please in the book of Luke, in the Gospel of St. Luke, starting at the ninth chapter. I want to say, uh, we're gonna be in the ninth chapter starting at verse 23. I want to say, uh, uh, you know, God was talking to me as I was standing up, I said, Lord, now, you didn't if, you didn't, if you're gonna change this message, come on and change it, let me know something. So I wanna tell the Lord, thank you for being faithful. I thank God. Let me tell you something. God knows. He knows you better than you know you. Yes. Let me tell you something. You think you know you. That's all you can I can say. God knows us better than we will ever, ever know ourselves. Ever know ourselves. That's why I depend and lean upon him. We're in the book of, uh, in the gospel of St. Luke, uh, chapter 9, verse 23. We there? Amen. Okay. And the word of God reads, Then he said to them all, he being Jesus, uh -huh. if anyone desires to come after me, uh-huh, uh-huh, let him deny who? Himself. himself. And take up his cross daily and do what? Follow me. Follow me. Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. Verse 24, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Thank God for the reading of his word, but he's more so that power, that Holy Ghost power, that he gives us to do this word. If I had to use as a topic this morning, I would have to say, what's to follow? Okay. What's your next? Hallelujah. What's your next? You may be seated. You know, Bishop has been speaking with us about uh, next level. Mm -hmm. Lord has been using him to speak to us about our next level. This morning, we believe that we are declaring and decree some things in this place. Again, stand on what God has told us to say. See, God will put a word in your mouth. You've got, got to be willing to repeat and say what God said. Uh -huh. And that's the problem, I think, these days, is that we say too much yeah. about what other folks would say. Yes, we right. repeat everything that we yes, hear and yes, see sir. but what God tells yes, us. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma oh, yeah, I know I'm right about that. You are right about that. Bishop, you need something, sir. You're going to do what you're doing. Okay, man. amen. And so what, when, when God told me, you know, when he gave this message, and I'll be quite honest with you today, it is a repeat message for me. may not be one for you. It'll be your first time in hearing it. But the, 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 it's a repeat message for me, and it helps me. I was sharing with the congregation earlier today about how I have a Facebook friend, uh, preacher of the gospel, uh, who lost their mother um, uh, earlier this week. And uh, believe it or not, we've had quite a few of those. But I thought about it. That this dear brother had just preached a powerful message on Sunday and then to find out on Monday uh, that his mother had passed. And I just thank God for how he prepares his people. Yeah. Oh, I know he prepares his people because he prepared me two years ago the same exact way. And I thank God because he will give you a right now word for your, you may think, is well, that don't concern me right now. But see, God knows where you're going. Right. And because he's a God that works from the end to the beginning, All right. uh -huh. he prepares us right. for what's next uh -huh. and what's to follow. Uh -huh. Okay, so for the last two years, and can we say this a little bit longer, over two years now, We've been going through some things that's been uh, affecting us uh, outside of the pandemic. Yeah, if you have not noticed and you've lived in this world at any given time and you haven't been in a, up on a rock somewhere, it's some things that have happened even since COVID-19, right. okay? 
some things like they're supposed to be a famine and all of this. Shortage of food, okay? That's what it's supposed to be, a shortage of food. Uh, uh, but but and, and you can go anywhere to, to, to restaurant. You can go into the stores, and you are having a time trying to find things on the shelf, even at right. the store, for those of you that cook at home, okay? Yeah. And those for us that don't cook at home, I said, us. <laughs> I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about nobody else but me. Those of us don't, when you went to the restaurant, there were certain things you couldn't get. Right. They weren't readily available. Okay, so then you found out after the shortage went away, when it became food become abundance again, now you're paying more right. for it. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. See, that doesn't even quite right. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody right, right. now. Right. Because you got to be prepared for what's next. I stood here, I think about a year ago, along with my son, the Lord spoke to him as well, he gave a message, that there's something else that's coming. And God is preparing you through all of that for what's next. Now, we can be prepared for what's next because God knows, or we can just not pay attention to God and go by what we see and go by what we hear in the media. We can continue to depend on the government right. and everything else for info. Right and go by that, we can continue to even rely on our own emotions and right. what we feel like and all right. of this, right. and you knowing you ain't even went to God to ask him right. or consulted him in prayer, mm. those are the things right there It's going to help and have you to miss your next, yeah. okay? Yeah. And see, I just want to share something with you, that even though those things that have happened over the past, over two years, uh, that was so distressing to us, uh, and I say distressing because it was distressing. Yeah. Some of us lost parents. I said that already. Right. We lost our parents. We lost mamas. There were those that lost spouses. Right. There were those that, listen, children. Listen, all of that happened during that, that time period. Uh, and to be compounded with other things that were happening economically and spiritually. Now you begin to see some other things. Now you begin to see fires all over the place. Right. You begin to see droughts all over the place. You begin to see uh, earthquakes, okay? Mm -hmm. And don't forget that hurricane season is upon us now. Right, right, right. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. We had heard them about one heaven. No, we haven't. But see, God want to prepare you for what's next. Mm -hmm. See, you got to know what's your next and you want to know what's to follow. See, somebody want to ask the question like this. Okay, you tell me, you know, what's to follow. And, and 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 uh what you know what's the following you know like in, in your in a derogatory term like so then what so now what else mm -hmm. okay so you tell me you know this is what's gonna follow but then what mm -hmm. and we said in a in a negative connotation but God wants us to know that He's preparing us for whatever comes next. All right. No matter what it is, mm -hmm. I have to trust and depend on God. That puts me to my first point, okay? Mm -hmm. See, your attitude's gonna make a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your attitude about whatever's coming next or what's to follow, it's gonna make a difference on how you handle what's to follow and what's next. Right. So the attitude is cannot be based upon what's currently happening, whether it be how you feel about something or what you see that's going on, if your attitude is based upon that, guess what's going to happen? It's going to affect me right. to where I, when I do, if I do go forward, I'm going to have that same attitude. So no matter what happens, it's going to be based upon what's happening right now. Right. right. So th this is why it's very important that how I handle certain things or how my attitude is, it's going to make the biggest a difference of how it's going to allow me to move into my next. See, God's got something prepared for his people in the what's next, at the next level. But if I've got the same old stank attitude over here, yeah. I can't, I'm going to go over there. Then no matter what, how right. good it is over there for me, yeah. it's not going to make a difference because I've got the wrong attitude. So my attitude is going to make a difference. Some of us just want to know, so you know, I just want to know what's going to happen next. Right. Mm -hmm. I need to know what's happening next. Why though? Right. Why you, because once you know, if you, you know, they want, well, because they want to make adjustments, they want to be able to make adjustments and change. But can I say something? Man's way of seeing things that's going to happen, their, his prediction about what's going to happen 
may not happen just like that. And then the second thing, I can only tell you, a man can only tell you what's going to happen next. But how about how you react to it or right. how you feel about right. it? Again, man can't tell you that. Exactly. Right. So what God wants to do and what God is doing is that he shows his people, those that learn to depend upon his word, right. those that have learned to trust in him, on, learn, right. those that have realized that his strength is perfect right. yeah. when uh -huh. my strength is gone, right. those who totally rely upon him, Trust him because he knows everything. Uh -huh. He knows how to even adjust my attitude right. if I let it. Right. So the first thing that I want to talk about that we that God wants to talk about at least, and we have been saying it because God has been saying it for a while now. You got to learn how to wait on God's word. You got to learn how to wait on the Lord and see what He says about it, and stop jumping at things. You know we quick to jump when something happens. You know how somebody know we quick to jump? Huh. It could be something right now, and then it'll come on the TV, and it will say it, and we quick to jump on it because, you know what? Our attitude will change. We won't even go to God in prayer. Our attitude will change. We got an opinion about it. You know what then we do? We go and text about it. We go and post about it. We go and call a friend and tell them about it. And most of the time, we have not even checked the validity of it. Uh -huh. You know what that means? That means check to see if it's valid, if it's true. Yeah, yeah. We'll go and pass it on before we even find out. I remember uh, when uh, Dr. K.C. Price, uh, God rest his soul, got sick, you know. And before the man could die, folks was posting that he was dead. Right. I'm being honest with you. We don't check the validity of nothing. Right. We presume and assume. Uh -huh. I got to learn how to wait on God. I don't have to tell you about Isaiah 40, 31. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. You already know that those that wait upon the Lord, right, yeah. shall renew their strength. Yeah. He, he does it. He does it for you. Yeah. That's why I say when you might you so weak and everything, wait on the Lord. He will New York strength. All right. I don't have to tell you about Psalms 27, 14. I'm going to run there right quick where it talks about, you know, you need to wait on the Lord. Amen. Why do you need to wait on the Lord, though? I'm going to show you. That's 27, 14. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait on him. See, that's how you know how to handle your neck. I'm talking about how to change your attitude here, right? right. Uh -huh. So you can know what's to follow. And it really won't matter what's to follow. You won't matter what's next because you know what? You're waiting on Lord. Right. And no matter what comes or may, you're going to be encouraged because you're waiting on the Lord and he's going to renew your strength. Mm -hmm. See, too many times, you know, uh, we won't, we, we, you know we, we'll go there and, and we'll hear things just like we heard things, you know, that, you know, you need to go stock up. Mm. Right. Uh-huh. You know, right. I, and this is the thing, though. I understand that 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 God, you know, will, will, you know. But I'm reminded of something. Just like last week when the Lord took, told us about Elijah, and He sent him somewhere. He told Elijah to declare a word that there was going to be a drought in the land, which brought about a famine. Yeah. He didn't tell Elijah to go and stock up. Mm. He told Elijah to go to a certain place that he would provide for him. Right. See, I'm reminded of that even when we pray in our scripture, we say, God, give us this day, our daily bread. Uh -huh. We rely on God. So now, I just, don't get me wrong, I, I, I mean, God has not said that to me. Right. And even when I tried to go and stock up, the Lord wouldn't allow me. Right. Right. I'm just saying me. Amen. Me. Amen. I'm Amen. just not me now, right Amen. now. But I'm just saying that when we go and we hear things like that, we all go out there and we all create a shortage. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Because of fear. Right. Yeah. Doubt. Uh -huh. And unbelief. Uh -huh. See, I'm reminded Job waited on the Lord. Yeah. And he waited through suffering. Yes, he, did. he waited through suffering. He said, yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh -huh. You got to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
And see, I remember when we go to John 21, join me there, please. See, too many times, you know, uh, 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 we, we don't understand that God had already told us. And again, depending on this word, Bishop, depending on this word, yeah. he told us, and you can write this down before we go to John 21. Write this down, Lamentations 326. See, it's good that we should hope and wait quietly for the Lord's salvation. See, if we wait on the Lord, he's going to save us. <laughs> he's a rescuer. That's what he does. That's what that salvation means, by the way. God comes and rescues his people. Will y'all believe that? Mm -hmm. John 21, starting at verse 18, is where I'm going to be reading from. Amen. Just to lead up to this, to tell you what God is saying to us, you know, too many times we want to rely on other sources or resources, I should say, rather than waiting on the Lord himself, who is the source of everything. Right. How many of you know that the, the king's heart is in the Lord's hand, uh -huh. and he can turn it? You know what that means by the king's heart? That's the government, people that's in power, those that are in authority. Yeah. He can turn their hearts. Right. Only he can do that. Here's a note for somebody. While you're depending on the, the, the government to do something for you, while you're depending on somebody else to do it, and, and while you're working on things, you know, trying to coerce or trying to get a person to do something, you just walk up right before the Lord like he said last week. That if you go there and you shun evil and right. you do good, right. uh -huh. God will make sure that good follows you. Right. 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 And so this is why we don't have to go all out of our way. I hope you're listening to yes, me. Yes, we don't have to go out of our way trying to appease right. and please nobody. Right. The Bible says that when a man's ways please God, he'll make his enemies to be at peace with. Right. All right. All right. I'm talking Bible right now. Yeah. Will you join me? You, you're already there in John 21 Amen. and verse 18, so I need the one that needs to get there. Yeah. I'm there. Let's read this. See, too many times we're too concerned and worried about what others doing. We can't do what God done told us to do but looking over to the left and over to the right over there to see what they doing uh -huh. and what they ain't doing. All right. And I'm reminded what Jesus said right here to the Apostle Peter. Is that right? Verse, I'm, I'm, I'm in John 21, verse 18, starting. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you. Verse 19. Then he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. That's Jesus talking to Peter. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following. He was following along while Peter and Jesus was talking. Mm -hmm. Who also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? So Peter was making a reference to John, to the apostle John, but because that's who, how he referred to himself as the one that Jesus loved, Jesus, uh, Peter looked over at John, and this is what he said in verse 21. Can I read it? Mm -hmm. Amen. Peter seeing him said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? See, too many times, right. God done told us something uh -huh. and has said something for us to do. And we want to not do what God says based upon what somebody else is not doing. See, I have to be mindful of this. This was a prophecy that Jesus was giving directly to Peter. Right. He was telling people, Peter, what's going to happen next? What's going to follow? Right. Okay? He's telling him so that he can be prepared. And rather than him put, put, put his face and, and be focused on what Jesus is saying here, he wants to deflect and wants to ask Jesus, so what about this man? Right. If I got to go through that, what he going to go through? Right. And with that, I want to show you what God says. See, we don't know. We, we, we Many of us don't want to really know God's purpose and plan for us. Right. We really don't want to know. We right. say we want to right. know. Right. Right. Because we want to be 
uh, for lack of a better word, nose in it, see what's right. in it, what's right. good in it. Right. Uh -huh. right, right, right. But now when God tells you to plan for you don't sound so right. desirable, right. then now I want to ask about somebody yeah. else. Yeah. But if I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. God tells me things to prepare me That's for the next. Yeah. See, too many of us are led astray and we're not in God's will for sin and doing and following others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know right. I'm right about that. All right. Too many of us are not inside the will of God because other people, other people, other things are affecting me on what I do when God not already told me what to do. I heard the testimony this morning. My brother said, listen, I look. I know what God had told me. I, I did it, and I looked, and I seen something, and I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> but thank God. Uh-huh. That he's an encourager. Yeah, he right. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes along and say, and he didn't force it. No, man. He says, so what you gonna do? That's, right. That's the way the Lord is. He gives us choices. So this is it right here. You either gonna follow me yeah. or you gonna follow your own way. You can't do both of them and yeah. save your mind. All right. The second thing I set before you, he uh, said, yeah, yeah. blessings and curses, life and death. And then he says to you, choose life. Choose Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to put it out there to you just like that. Yeah. For all those that, that figure that you want to come up and you have found a more better way, yeah. all these other yeah. teachings, I'm going to say uh -huh. teachings. Yeah. And by the way, the Lord told us that did he not, that in the last days that yeah. there's going to be false teachers and yeah. false prophets. Uh -huh. Okay, let me go and put it out there for y'all because I'm bold enough to say it. Hebrew Israelites, false prophets, right. false teachings. Amen. Amen. All right? New age, false teachers, false prophets. See, we always, that's the way man is. We've always tried to call ourselves finding something more intellectual where we can be in control. And that's the pride of man. See, but we can't accept this gospel, what Jesus did on our behalf, because you know why? Your pride won't let you. Your pride yeah. say, well, I don't want to be depending on no man. I, I choose my own salvation. That's why you're going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. Because I don't see any way. Okay, okay, okay. Keep thinking you are chosen particular ethnicity people right. by God. Right. God, I said the Bible, said it earlier, God not, there's no respect of person. Uh -huh. God don't look at no, no, no certain race, right. no color. Right. He look at us as humanity. Yeah. And he said, we all have fallen, have sinned and fallen short of his glory, right. which is why we need a Savior. Right. And so I just want to know who that Savior is for y'all. Listen, I wouldn't care if Jesus had whatever color eyes and I, I wouldn't care if he's bald-headed. <laughs> Listen, as long as he's Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. the Son of God, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. right. his blood was red. Yeah. Mine is too. All right. Amen. But his blood was perfect. Yeah. And mine wasn't. Yeah. So he could be that sacrifice. And because God said that he was my example and in sample, I would live a sacrificial life yeah. for him. Right. Amen. As I hurry on, I didn't want to get too far off. But the Lord tells us that so many are led astray and they're not in his will. For seeing and doing and following others. And by the way, here's a pinpoint, including some of us spiritual leaders. Yeah. I'm going to take myself out of that. Some of you spiritual leaders. Because I'm not going to be led astray by doing what yeah. Bishop Tutu, and he's dead, God forgive me. Okay. A bishop so and so, what he's doing over there, or what they're doing, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And I'm not going to be concerned about what they're doing. Because let me say something. And here's another pinpoint that God. I, see, I'm not one of those ones that go there and put my mouth on people of God. And I tell you why. I had to learn this stuff. God had to teach me. See, the church is missing a whole lot of discernment. And that's one of the gifts that God wants us all to have, by the way. Mm -hmm. To be able to discern good from evil, mm -hmm. right from wrong, truth from error, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But too many of us done set ourselves up as God, uh, 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 I guess henchmen, that's what I said, to where you spend more time attacking those in the body of Christ than you do out there evangelizing right. and, and, and winning the loss to the Lord. And, and I only have, I believe that God is saying one thing to those of you that do that. You need to be very, very careful. Uh, maybe you are operating in discernment. But you got to be operating the perfect will of God, not the permissive will of God. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. It may not be your place to come out checking nobody. Mm. See, I leave things that belong to God to God. That's God's business. He know how to check his people. Yeah. Right. And because he called them, he knows how to check them when they're in error. Because none of us are perfect. And I would like to think, don't get me wrong, let me go ahead and say it, and I'm going to say it right now. Yes, he does use people. But you better make sure that he's using you. Second of all, he's going to send you to them mm -hmm. to tell them about their error rather than you posting your opinion mm. all over the place. Right. See, I'm going to keep my mouth off of those people and let God handle his people. Now, when he tell me to, to prophesy or to say something, then I will. But most of us are not operating like that. We have decided that we're going to do it because I don't agree with it and I don't believe it's right. And then most of the time, you don't even have a scripture basis for it. Right. I'm just saying what God done told me to say right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep my mouth off because I'm reminded of what uh, Gamaliel said in Acts uh -huh. when he told them that the, the religious folks, uh -huh. them folks that supposed to be following God, that, <laughs> that, 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 that Apostle Paul had to put on glad those Sadducees and, uh -huh. and, and, and Pharisees, the Jewish Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. he went there and he told them, and he was a part of the Sanhedrin. He said, let's be careful about how we treat these men right here. Let's be found fighting against God himself. Mm -hmm. right. I, I don't want to be found doing that. Wow. I, I want God to do what he going to do, and if it's not him, God know how to protect his own name, by the way. Right. I know he do because he's more powerful than you and I ever will be. See, we're too busy worrying about those things. We're too busy worrying about Dr. Juanita Bynum having a, 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 a prayer conference at $1,500. Okay, but 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 I, th this is what I got to say about it. she teaches somebody. She says she's going to teach you how to pray. She want to help you learn how to pray. She want to mentor you and show you. But you don't have a problem with taking $1,500 and going down there and getting you a, 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 a the best seat for the cowboy game. You don't have right. a problem with that. Right. That ain't going to do nothing to glorify God. Right. At least praying or learning the proper way to pray or somebody mentoring you in prayer. I had to be mentored in prayer when I first got saved. I don't know about y'all. Believe it or not, some of us that's been saved a while need to be mentored in prayer on how to pray. I know, listen, the Bible says, but you know what? We can't get it for some reason. We can't get it. So he uses people. That's why he called leaders, pastors, and evangelists, apostles, and prophets, and teachers to teach us those things that's going to glorify God and edify the body. That means to build the body up. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not concerned about that for one reason. She want to charge $2,500. I'm going to pay it or I ain't. Just that simple. Right. And if I ain't, I ain't got to say about it. The second thing that we need to be provided on, and God has told us, because, you know, he done told us to wait on him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he done said wait on him. Mm -hmm. He told us this for, we've been giving us messages about be still mm -hmm. uh, uh, and wait and, and see. The next thing we got to do is watch, though. You know what watching and, and, and means in, in, in this context is to trust and believe God. Mm -hmm. You're not watching God to see what he going to do next. You already got an expectation of what God's going to do. So you're trusting and believing, and you just, while you're waiting, you're watching. Right. Psalms 31, 14, if you would go right quick with me there. See, we trust in too many things, and they fail. And uh, we trust in too many things, and we give too much credit to things. And you know what happens? Fear, doubt, right. unbelief, uh -huh. worry, stress. Depression, 
Y'all ever wonder why all of a sudden you hear about all this uh, mental illness, all this, yeah. all of a sudden everybody's got depression? Hmm. I mean, you can't, listen, on the TV, you know, there's two or three different drugs. I mean, every, I mean, every hour, can you imagine that? Every hour, <clears throat> two to three times during an hour's time, they're advertising about a medicine that's supposed to treat depression. Right. Y'all, y'all ever paid attention to that? Mm -hmm. I know you, you know because it don't affect you. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I seen that, and I say, Lord, why is it all of a sudden you never, you never heard anything about it? Then all of a sudden now, you can't. It's kind of like that Camp Lejeune thing. Right. You know, it's but it's been this, this, this been there longer, mm -hmm. and been going ongoing for a long time. Mm -hmm. Psalms thirty one. Verse 14, are we there? Amen. Yeah. But as for me, I trust in you, oh Lord. Yes, I do. I say you are my God. See, anytime we trust and rely, I'm talking about the people of God, okay, yeah. which we shouldn't be doing it. But just for those that don't know God, anytime you, 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 you rely on anything else, that's your God. That is your God. You trust that. You rely on that. And I want to tell you this. It's not going to work. Whether it be your job, hello somebody, whether it be the government, whether it be mom and them, I'm just going to say it. What, no matter who or what, you got to understand that you got to have faith in something that has power. Right. And most of these things don't have, their power is limited. By the way, it's temporary. Whatever that you get is temporary. And God tells us that he's the one that has all power. He's all, right. all sovereign. He will, you will never, ever be shamed if you wait, if you watch and trust and, 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 and uh, depend on God. Psalms 20, verse 7, says something like this. And if you can beat me there, it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we we remember the name of the Lord our God. Right. See, I'm reminded that in his name is power. When I call on the name of the Lord, when I call on his name, he said he will answer. When I call on his name, the Bible says that when I call on his name, that demons tremble right. and flee. When I call his name, things shift in the atmosphere. That's the power that the believer has when we keep the name and we remember the name of God in our tongue. But we got to learn how to obey God and say what God says. Right. See, the only power that we have, I know you say the scripture says, Sister Stevenson and, and Proverbs, that the power of death and life is in our tongue. Right. Absolutely right. Because, you know, we quick to speak death on something. Oh, yes. We'll kill something in a minute. But how many of us know how about speaking life All right. to something? Yes, ma'am. How about speaking some life and, and having some faith to say, you know what, Lord, I see what it looks like, but I know that this is going to turn around. I know that this is temporary. I know that this too shall pass. I know that weeping endures for a night, that joy comes in the morning. I know that no matter how dire the situation is, God is going to come in and raise up a standard for his. Because I trust and I'm going to believe him and I'm going to watch. He said I would never be put to shame. Never be put to shame. Then the last thing that, that we have to do as those of us, if we want to know what's to follow and, and, and what's my next, is that I got to worship him. All right. He says worship me. Follow me. John 12, 26 please. See I have to understand this. A lot of folks think that worship is when you come into a building and you come together and we call it praise and worship, okay? Mm -hmm. We call it praise and worship. And then, you know, or some say, well, I know that worship ain't that because I can have a, a personal worship time. I ain't got to go into uh, 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 a building. Right. But see, this is what we equate. I say we, 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 because I think we're all guilty of it. We equate worship with singing to God. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm wrong, Anna. 
I am wrong about that. Yeah, I am wrong about it, but I'm right about the fact that most of us right. believe that's what worship is. Right. Uh -huh. All right. That we sing to the Lord a new song. Mm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with singing to the Lord. That's not what I'm saying, okay? But let me tell you what worship is. Worship is when I am focused on the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what your greatest act of worship is? Anybody ought to know this, but everybody don't. But I'm going to help you today. Your greatest act of worship is your obedience to God. Mm. What? Amen. Simple stuff, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Your greatest act of worship is your obedience to God. All right. To his word. And not doing what you think God would want you to do. By the way, we have a problem with that to where we think we know what God is requiring us when he had already told us in his word what he requires of us. And then he will tell you in prayer if you get there. John 12, 26. Y'all there? Amen. It says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. Mm -hmm. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the problems that we have. We don't want to serve, but we want to be served. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know I'm right about that. Yep. We treat God like that. We want God to serve us. You know how come I know I'm right? Mm -hmm. Because we'll get into prayer, and rather than praise and give God glory and just praise him and say, God, nevertheless, your will be done, we come with a list of what we want from God. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That's not worship. Right. See, worship is when I go because he's the object of my worship. He's my master. He's my savior. I go for him and I say, Lord, what is it that you require of me? What is it that you would have me to do, Lord? See, this is how we can get prepared for the next. This is how we can be ready for what's to follow. Is that when I spend this time in worship, and worship is when I'm focused on him, yeah. when I'm seeking him to find out what does he require at any given time. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about just when I come in on Sunday or on Wednesday, or even when I do my quiet time in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's when it's a lifestyle, by the way. I want to say that worship is a lifestyle. Yeah, it's not it. it's not an act, believe it or not. It. You might say it's an act of worship. No. My worship is a lifestyle. It's, listen, I live and breathe to serve the Lord. I live and breathe to honor God. I live and breathe to glorify God. I live and breathe to make his name famous. Right. Make his name glorious. Mm -hmm. See, the way I do this is that I allow Jesus to be shown through me. Mm -hmm. As Matthew 5, 16 said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Right. See, we don't even when we get in the marketplace or we get in the workplace or we get in the schoolhouse or we get wherever we are outside of the house of worship. And by the way, it's where a whole lot of y'all at right now outside the house of worship. You spend a heap more time now outside the house of worship. So I'm just wondering how you worship Him. Because you really felt that, you know what? Well, I just do my personal worship. But I just told you that worship is an act. It's, it's what? Not an act. It's, it's a lifestyle of obedience. Right. Right. And focus on what the Lord wants. Right. And if you really believe. I'm talking right now. Not the Holy Ghost. You really believe God said this right here. That it's all right for you to never gather and assemble yourself with the saints except by a Zoom meeting. Then you have been deceived, my friend. Because the Bible tells us that we're to come together to be encouragers one to another. Right. We were created for worship and fellowship. I know I'm right about that. Mm -hmm. See, I'm reminded, that's why, I eat. oh, Jesus. See, uh, uh, Adam and, 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 and uh, the, the Father, God, had a relationship come together because they were fellowshipping. Yeah. But he seen that he needed something more than that. Right. Because, see, Adam was flesh and blood. Right. God is spirit, mm -hmm. okay? And with that, he said, he got to have something comparable to him mm -hmm. so that he can fellowship with. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody said, so that he can know her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same difference. 
taking fellowship together. And that's why if, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus, back I'm going to say it. If you're okay with being alone, there's something wrong. That's right. Ain't right. The Holy Ghost is not leading that. See, the only somebody that wants you alone as a child of God yeah. uh -huh. is the enemy himself so he can have his way with you. Right. He can tell you that everything you think, say, and do is right. So he can keep you out of this. And see, he'll let you even get in this as long as you lean into your own understanding. Right. He don't have a problem with you studying the word. Well, you want to be honest with you. Can I say something? You're not studying the word. Because if you truly study the word to get truth, the right. Holy Ghost will come in and convict the truth. Right. But if you study going and finding scripture so that you support your stance, right, right, oh right, yeah, that's right. the enemy driven all day long. Because uh -huh. he comes to corrupt truth. He comes to, to taint the word of God. He comes to taint anything of God. See, the number one place that we find out that we don't worship God and, 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 and serve God is that we don't do it daily. We rather obey man rather than obey God. And, and, and we rather do things that's based upon our emotion and our feelings rather than the Holy Ghost. Lead. Right, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the way, the Holy Ghost, when he leads, he confirms what's in the Word of God. That's right, every time, yeah. So that's another false teaching I'm going to go ahead and say. The Holy Ghost told me to do this. You ought to have some type of scripture yes, reference ma or principle yes, out of the Word of God. Yes, support that. Because, see... There are other spirits that ain't so holy. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, there's a way that seemeth right, right unto man, but it leads to destruction. You better get with the Holy Ghost. I want to share something with you that you may not know, but maybe it's a reminder to many of us. I told you about your attitude is going to make a difference, right? right. Uh -huh. I told you that uh, you need to know what's to follow and not be negative with that. And you ought to know what your next is going to be. I told you got to wait on God. Mm -hmm. I told you got to watch. Mm -hmm. That means trust God and continue to do what God has called you to do. But God has always told us what's next. Yes, ma'am. He's always told us what's to follow. Yes, ma'am. He's always told us ahead of time. We just don't want to hear it like that. Can you be more specific? Well... If you get in my face, I probably would. Right. Rather than you going out there planting a fifteen hundred dollar seed in that false prophet hand, hmm. that's telling you that you're gonna get that mansion that you ain't got yet. It's been twenty five right. years. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. Well, that one that told you you gonna get a car and you went out there and got it, and now you're paying three times more for that car than what it's worth. Hmm. But you got that car because that. Pro anyway, see, it is written. What's next? He prepares us for what's next. Right. He put it in. He put it in the prophet's mouth, right. the true prophet's mouth, his prophet's mouth. He 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 tells us via the Holy Spirit, and he tells us via the Word what's next. Right. The problem that we have as people of God is that we're too lazy, too busy, too self-absorbed, too distracted, right. to where we won't spit, be still. I said, be still. Right. And wait, mm -hmm. sit quietly, uh -huh. as Lamentation said, and wait to hear from the Lord. The songwriter Ron said, Why are you trying to calculate up the cost and what you're going to lose if you do this? Why don't you just wait on the Lord? Mm -hmm. Another songwriter said, Why are you trying to figure it out? God already done worked, worked it, it out. out. All right, right. hallelujah. All you got to do is wait on it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For your next, that is. See, he tells us this. I got to stay set apart. That's my worship. I don't do what society is doing. I don't do what the culture is doing. I don't let that influence me in my decision making. I trust the one that knows everything. And I rely upon him and I consult him before I make any moves. Matter of fact, can I give you another little nugget? You ought to consult him for your own your mouth sometimes. All right. 
I, I, I say this to you for one reason. Because you mess around and you speak some condemnation on yourself. That's right. you're, you're not declaring and decreeing the right thing. So you ought to consult and say, before I say that, mm -hmm. I don't care who say, say it. I'm going to wait. And I'm going to watch. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to worship God. Right. Maybe today, somebody under the sound of my voice is wondering what I'm talking about. Psalms 23, 6 tells us that, you know, in order for me to worship the Lord, I got to be, he's got to be my shepherd, first of all. Because that's what Psalm 23 is about. You know, we learned that as a child, didn't we? Yeah. Many of you did. Mm -hmm. I said many of you did. I never learned it. Uh, I was an adult before I even knew what it was. Somebody say, well, every, every child, no, didn't know it. He said in Psalms 23, 6, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. See, that's what comes to follow. Right. When I follow the Lord, what's going to follow me? or what's to follow, or what's next, is goodness and mercy. Amen. Goodness and mercy. No matter whatever else I may have thought I wanted, I say this very, I say this, I say this because you know his goodness and his mercy, mm. his kindness goes throughout the earth. Mm. It does. And so if nothing else I can rely on, I can rely on his goodness and mercy following me. Yeah. I thank God and we should thank God today that what's to follow and what's in my next if I wait on him and I watch and I worship goodness and mercy are going to follow me but may I say something else as I mentioned beforehand God don't hold nothing, no good thing right. from those that walk up right before him. Right. He told me that if I'm willing and obedient, uh -huh. I'll eat the good of the land. All right. Amen. Yeah. He said willing and obedient, uh -huh. though. That worship thing, I told you that act of worship is on your obedience. And, and to the Lord mm -hmm. and doing what the Lord say when he says how he says yeah. that in itself is more than enough to keep us busy it would keep us more busy Bishop than you would you know trying to figure out what Tom, Dick, Harry Sally and Sue is doing <laughs> if I would just concentrate on what God has already told us here mm -hmm. as well as what he says to me while I'm spending time daily with him in prayer. Mm -hmm. I got more than enough to do right. and be concerned about what they're doing over in Russia mm -hmm. or anywhere else for that matter. God will show his people what to even pray about. Mm -hmm. True. If you just sit, you ain't, listen, that's where I used to be. I used to, when I, when I was a young Christian, I would run to the TV because I didn't like to watch the news, but I started watching the news so I could find out what to pray for. Right. Well, that was God teaching me to pray. Mm -hmm. See where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got to be taught to pray. Mm -hmm. Then you got to be taught, taught how mm -hmm. to pray. So the how is when I yield to the Holy Ghost because we know not what to pray for. Yeah. But the Holy Ghost, with groanings and groanings, he makes the will of God to be known. Right. And I always want to pray what? The will, the will of God. God. We see the model in that. We see that model of prayer in Matthew 6 of that. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so while I'm doing these things that God and already is written and what he's revealing to me, I won't be concerned about things that can distress me, depress me, stress me out. Even them folk on your job. Hmm. 
sometimes even them folk in your house, get in your prayer closet, get in the word of God, and let him speak to you. So for those of you that want to know about, well, I, I, I want to know if God is speaking to me. Well, right now, if you're asking that question, he's speaking. He wants you to have a relationship with him. But you can't come to God any way that you want to. There's a required way. Matter of fact, there is only one way. John 14, 6 says, and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man, woman, boy, or girl, comes to the Father except by me. That's what he said. And Jesus also said that any come unto me, I've got no wise cast them out. Mm -hmm. So he's free to receive it. And I already, we already know what Romans 10, 9, and 10 says. Is mm -hmm. I confess the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you know God raised him from the dead. He is the son of God, by the way. He's God incarnate. And I shall be saved. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved got to call upon him with a sincere heart yes. and ask him Jesus, Lord, Father save me. I accept your plan of salvation. Yeah. I accept your way of salvation. Yeah. I already know that my, 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 my goodness and my righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that I can do, nothing that I can say that can secure me a place in your kingdom or a relationship with you, Lord. It's only through the blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary's cross. And he shed it willingly. He came to do it willingly. He came already knowing what was next for him when he left glory. He knew that he was going to live a sinless life, but that still, and that was a requirement, by the way, in order for him to be the lamb that was out of spot or blemish. The Bible says he was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. God had already saw that we were going to need a savior. Right. So Jesus came. He knew what his next was going to be. And you know what he did? He still finished. Mm -hmm. He went through humiliation, degradation. He went through a brutal, brutal beating. In a horrific death on the cross. All for me. I make it personal. Yeah. You have to make it personal as well. Yeah. You have to realize that everything that Jesus did yeah. was so that you could have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Yeah. And until you accept what he did as a free gift of salvation. I'm going to talk Bible just a little bit here. The Bible says there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Yeah. And it has to be a blood that's worthy. And God sent his son as the only worthy blood to die for the sins of the world. I thank Jesus for paying that penalty for me. I don't have to, as I said earlier, I can deny my I, I can deny myself and pick up my cross. You know what my cross is? To go through this life glorifying God. All right. That's my cross. And whatever comes through this life, I won't I won't mutter, I won't complain. Because Jesus did a real cross. I don't have to die for myself. That's right. He already did it for me. And I thank God for it. So today, anyone that may be listening now or maybe listening in the future at this recording, I pray right now that the word of God done prick your heart in a way to where you ask the question, what is it that I need to do to inherit eternal life like the rich young ruler. Very simple. You ask Jesus to come and be your Lord and save you with a sincere heart. Yeah. Simple prayer, real simple. Father God, Lord, I recognize my condition and my position. I am a sinner. And I need a Savior. And I heard the story that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on my behalf. You lived a sinless life so that his blood could be shed as a sacrifice for mankind. Mm -hmm. I accept that free gift. I accept your son, Jesus, as, the, as my Lord and my Savior. 
And I ask you, Lord, to come and lead and guide and direct me for the rest of my life. I yield my life to you now. No more me. It's all about you. And I thank you for saving me. Yes, and Lord. thank you for the gift of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to serve you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. Hallelujah. Just that simple. And if you said that prayer, we rejoice with you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And what, what you do next? What's your next? And that's what this is about. What's All your right. next? Tell Amen. somebody that you gave that you gave your life to Jesus today. Mm -hmm. Then you go find you. I say, not go find you. You go sincerely, like you said that prayer right there. You said that prayer right there. Sincerely pray to Lord, send me to a church to where I can grow and be nurtured in the things of God. And he'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. He'll do it for you. We like to be a part of that. Very simply, if you did it, go ahead and send us an inbox so that we can send you some free literature. We're not trying to solicit you for membership or anything like that. But what we do want to do is be a part of this salvation walk with you want to provide you with some literature that will help you. Mm -hmm. Some real simple stuff that will help you get an understanding of what you have entered into today. Right. Anything, anything. We can be, if you, even if you don't want the literature, just let us know that you gave your life to Jesus mm -hmm. so that we can be in agreement and pray with you so that we can be in agreement that God will send you to a church, a Bible-believing, teaching, living mm -hmm. church that, that, will, that, will, that you can be a part of and grow. And, and become baptized and walk in your new life. That's what we want to do. That's what the body of Christ do. We don't have any hidden agendas or ulterior motives. We want you to live your best life in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We want you to live your best life for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We want you to just live your best life ever because you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. So we thank y'all for joining us today. On behalf of Bishop Stevenson and the rest of this body of believers called the Red Sea Baptist Church, we count the joy that you join us today. We pray nothing but God's blessings upon you. We pray that it is well with you. We pray that as you go through your week next week that God will do something powerful for you. That where you will recognize God in his totality and you will glorify him every chance that you get. That's our prayer today. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Go in peace.